Fantasy sports aren't an illusion. Payouts are approaching billions of dollars per year. Both teams really did a great job scoring early on, although Northwestern did have a double-digit deficit in the second half. Roll Tide is synonymous with Tuscaloosa. The Alabama City will be rolling out much more than touchdowns and national titles in the future. Many fans who attended Bears games here at Memorial Stadium in 2002 kept their game day souvenirs, such as this Dick Butkus program. Talking Big Ten hoops here at the AT&T U-verse Lounge. Matt Maniscalco joined by Vinny Duber for CSNChicago.com. This week, the NFL will meet about the possible relocation of football teams to the Los Angeles market. Continuing with these marathons and these events are just a great way to just bring people together and remember what happened. Well, Jill, we want to uh, thank you very much for, for coming. We know that uh, must have been very, very challenging time yesterday in Boston. So thank you uh, for being here. Well, it's not guaranteed that Kaminsky is going to take home the trophy here at the end. D'Angelo Russell of Ohio State, the true freshman, has really done amazing things for the Buckeyes when he's been on the court. What's lost in the third quarter will be made up for in the fourth. And NBC News estimates 77 million new iPhones will be sold in the December quarter. That's up from a previous estimate of 74 million. The ink is dry on Jim Harbaugh's new contract at Michigan. We're going to see a lot of pink here at Huff Hall, both on the floor and in the stands. This is the breast cancer awareness match between Ohio State and Illinois. Obviously, it's a great cause. I'm not ashamed of losing at all. The Parkland Cobras have no reason to feel regretful. The 2013 women's volleyball team won 39 consecutive matches at one point en route to a 52-win campaign. The Cobras went undefeated in conference play and advanced all the way to the national championship game. The championship match against Cowley College was tied at two sets apiece and the Cobras had a late 14, lead in the 13, fifth set. Parkland. The national title slipped through their fingers as they dropped the final Go three points. Oh, a service error! And now it's overtime. First team All-American and Midwest Athletic Conference Player of the Year, Megan Casagrande, says the team became eager towards the end of the match. Well, there was one time where I got really, really excited about a kill that I could see coming and it went out. So sometimes you can get you can feel, oh, this is going to be perfect, and then you overhit it. There's 57 Parkland regional and national trophies right here behind me. The 2013 Women's Volleyball National Runner-Up Trophy is the newest hardware addition. But the Cobras don't just excel at volleyball. Six of Parkland's eight athletic programs have been crowned national champs over the past five years, including volleyball, baseball, softball, and men's basketball. Rod Lovett has been the director of athletics at Parkland for the past 11 years. He acknowledges that the Cobras don't receive much publicity, and he says that can actually be beneficial. So it's much more relaxed, much more laid back. And, and, and to be honest, I tell all of our coaches, I would say that none of our, we've never fired a coach here because of a win-loss record. Parkland's sustained athletic success is a direct result of its top-of-the-line facilities. I think our school has been very receptive to the fact that if we're going to keep up our success and our traditions, then we've got to, got to stay up on facilities as well. We went from a very small training room with about three benches now to a training room that would rival most NCAA Division I training rooms. Parkland athletes often move on to bigger schools and programs. Some even play professionally. Kevin Kiermeyer played baseball at Parkland in 2009. Last fall, he made his Major League Baseball debut with the Tampa Bay Rays in a one-game playoff. In Champaign, Matt Maniscalco, UI7 News. It's been 11 years since the Chicago Bears called the Memorial Stadium gridiron home. Some fans are still unsure if the 2002 season helped the relationship between the Bears and fighting Illini football. The 2002 Bears and Illini seasons were supposed to be memorable on the field. The 01 Bears won the NFC Central Division, while the 01 Illini brought the Big Ten crown back to Champaign. The Bears limped to a dismal 4-12 record in 02, and a talented Illinois squad underachieved with a 5-7 and seven record. In 2002, T.J. Blakeman was a U of I junior, and he had Bears season tickets in the horseshoe. He recalls tremendous fan support throughout the year, even though the Bears lost eight consecutive games at one point. Blakeman's a native of the Springfield area, and he didn't follow the Bears growing up. He says 2002 took the Bears-Illini relationship to new heights, 
Many Illini fans pay attention to the Bears today because of 2002. I can tell you that from someone like myself, being here, having season tickets to the Bears, um, I pay attention to them more. A lot of people in Central Illinois were season ticket holders that year, and I have to think that that only strengthened their passion for the Bears uh, and the way they followed the team. Many fans who attended Bears games here at Memorial Stadium in 2002 kept their game day souvenirs, such as this Dick Butkus program from the opening week of the season. And surprisingly, fans aren't the only ones who have positive memories from that season. Jim Miller played in the NFL for 11 seasons, and he was the starting quarterback for the 2002 Bears. Miller says the U of I staff was helpful in making Champaign the Bears' temporary home. The university was very accommodating to us. I do remember um, how the Bears organization and the university worked together. They upgraded a hotel locally there, fixed all the, it was right there on campus, fixed the elevators created more conference rooms. Miller says that going into the season, his team questioned whether they would have a home field advantage. The Bears quickly found out the answer after a week one victory over the Vikings. We had a come from behind victory. Like I said, the stadium was rocking and you almost felt like, man, this here we go again. Something special is going to happen. And it felt that way. And we felt confident as a team. Some say the 2002 season didn't have as great of a financial effect on Champaign or U of I athletics as it should have. U of I Associate Athletics Director for Media Relations, oh, Kent Brown, and, uh, says the school didn't have unrealistic expectations. Bandwagon. Just like our own games, fans come in and, and don't stay in hotels and they, they come into town and attend the game and have their tailgate parties and that sort of thing and then go home. The athletics department shared in concessions and beer revenue that Bears games generated. They used this money to upgrade the locker rooms and install a new video board at Memorial Stadium. In Champaign, I'm Matt Maniscalco, UI7 News. Fantasy sports aren't an illusion. Payouts are approaching billions of dollars per year. But it's an industry flooded with fans known as pros who pour endless time and dollars into their teams. We caught up to pro options trader Scott Bauer, president of Fantasy Draft Nation. He's translating his trading skills into running the fantasy site. Fantasy Draft Nation hits in the three hole in the Fantasy Sports League's batting order, sitting directly behind FanDuel and Draft Kings, the top two dogs in the industry. Bauer says his platform caters to the average fan. In all of our contests, over 25% of the people entered will win. The others, that is not true. So we want the average player who doesn't necessarily spend, you know, 12, 14 hours a day looking at these statistics and grinding, as they say, to be able to play and to have success. Because you know what? That's going to make them come back. Many fantasy sports pros use analytics to form endless entries so that they have better odds at bigger payouts. Fantasy Draft Nation has a formula that downscales this stranglehold. But on our platform, you can only enter a contest 20 times, or on some of the other ones, the pros can enter hundreds and hundreds of lineups into a particular contest. Don't be fooled, there's still plenty of serious cash on the table, even though Fantasy Draft focuses on the average player. The site will dish out half a million dollars in payouts for the upcoming NFL week alone. To Illinois Field we go for Sunday's rubber match against Northwestern. The CRB Illini broke out the Stars and Stripes Sunday, jerseys Mother for the Nature's second annual Honor and Serve Day. Bottom of the fifth, Illinois trailing par at the plate. Uh, streak is ahead. on the line. And there it is, a single past the second baseman. Streak is alive and healthy at 27 games. More importantly, the orange and blue are on the board. Northwestern does still maintain the lead, however, 2-1. to one. Now. Parr does have a twin brother, Jordan, and here he is, next inning, bottom of the sixth. And let's see what he does as he gets a pretty nice pitch to hit, and he will rip it uh, past center or into center field. He now has a 10-game hitting streak of his own. He says, anything you can do, I can do better. Michael Hurwitz scores. Illinois takes the lead, and Illinois goes on to win the series three game, or two games to one. This week, the NFL will meet about the possible relocation of football teams to the Los Angeles market. The Oakland Raiders, San Diego Chargers, and St. Louis Rams are all vying to play at a new stadium that could top $1.7 billion to build. The Orange County Registrar reports that a decision could be reached by the time Super Bowl 50 rolls around in February.